Hey everybody, welcome to HomeRecordingMadeEasy.com and here on my YouTube channel and this time out we're going to take a look at a new EQ that I have that is really, really cool. I really think you're going to dig it. It's by the company Abletunes and this is called the EQ Wise Plus and we're going to take a look at this uh, EQ. This is really, really cool, especially for beginners. This is one of the few uh, plugins that I've uh, that I've taken a look at recently that I would absolutely recommend um, and this is really cool. We're going to take a look at this. We're going to dive a little deep into it and, and, take, uh, and listen to it on a few different sound sources and I'll give you my thoughts on it. So before we get to that, if you like what you see in this video, hit that subscribe button below. It helps me out tremendously. Also go out to facebook.com slash home recording made easy and follow me there. And for more tips, tricks, concepts, and training around all aspects of home recording, mixing, and mastering, be sure to go back to home recording made easy.com. Make sure if you haven't done so already, you sign up for the VIP email list, five free mixing training courses. You get those right on my homepage. Go to home recording made easy. You will see it right at the top of the screen. All laid out for you, really simple. Hit the orange button, sign up, get five free courses, absolutely free, and also get special discount and pricing on all of my training products, which is something you really want to do. So become a VIP member. And last but certainly not least, go out to learningtomix.com. If you want to learn the craft of mixing and dive down deep with my buddy, Pete Woj from MixBetterNow.com and myself, yours truly, we have a mixing training membership website, really, really cool. 14 day free trial, learningtomix.com. Go out there, check it out for free for two weeks. And if you don't like it, you let me know. Cancel your membership, no problem, no questions asked. But I promise you, if you sign up and try it, you will stick around. You'll find it's the best mixing training on the internet, bar none. Totally cool, super affordable, yada, yada, yada. Let's get into Studio One and take a look at this EQ. Now, this is by a company called Abletunes. Again, it's called the EQ Wise Plus. Now, full disclosure, this uh, company contacted me, reached out to me, uh, checked out some of my other YouTube videos and said, hey, would you like to try our EQs Wise Plus, and would you like to do a review on it? Now, anyone that's been following me for a long time knows that it is very, very rare that I ever accept plugins from companies and do uh, reviews on them. I'm not here selling their e, uh, their EQ for them. Um, this is one of the few times in the last four or five years where I've had a company send me a free plugin to do a review on it. And the reason why I chose this one is because once I checked it out, I said, this thing is really, really cool. I want to be able to bring this information to my subscribers and they're also being being very, very kind and giving us a, uh, a handful of free licenses for this EQ that we that um, we'll be giving away to our learning to uh, membership uh, members um, for as part of our monthly mixing contest. So if you want a chance to win this actual uh, plug in, which is really cool, you got to be a member of learning to mix.com. However, if you like what you see in this video and you want to go check it out, if you go over to their website, and I'll bring it up on the screen here, here is their, whoops, I got to close the EQ first, don't I? Here is, uh, oh, Lordy, what did I do? Here we go. Here it is, Abletunes. Dot com. Here it is, $49.99, and trust me, it's worth 50 bucks. and I'm going to show you why in a second, but you can check it out right here as well. Mac, PC, doesn't matter. You can download the demo. Enough of that. Okay, so now let's take a look at this EQ. Now, what I love about this EQ, um, especially for beginners, what is super cool about this EQ, even though it looks really cool and it's got a lot of pretty colors and the GUI is really good, but look at the top here. They have these um, these these charts. They call them, and it's really good because it helps um, lets uh, helps you hone in on the frequencies that you need to kind of uh, you know uh, tweak depending on what's going on with your source material. For example, we have this thing called general chart here, and we'll go through a couple of the presets here. You can see down here as I scroll my mouse over here, the rumble and the sub bass of this uh, is down in this uh, shaded area here. At the bottom is here. The boom and the warmth where the mud is in this area, the honk is in this area, the tinniness sound is in this area, the crunch and presence is over in this area, definition and air is up here. Okay, that's a general chart. But what makes this even more special is you could go over, depending on what kind of source material you have, for example, drums, if you want to know where are the fundamental frequencies and where do I want to kind of uh, help shape my snare sound, just click on snare and you can see it changes. It shows you between 50 and 100 and say 10 hertz is where the low end and the rumble of the snare is. Here's the body and the ring area up in this area, okay? Here's the bang or the smack. And here's the air and the definition up in this area. So what this does for you is as you're listening to your source material, especially if you're a beginner and you're trying to 
listen to a, a, a sound source and go, geez, I don't like the way certain, something specific about my sound source sounds, but I'm not sure where to grab and how to, what frequencies do I go after? What target frequencies am I looking for? This chart system really helps you do that. And again, if you look at all the different charts, they have drums, they have live instruments, guitar and bass, they got um, string sections, cellos, violins, uh, brass uh, charts, electronic charts, vocals, and then white noise. So I'm not sure what you would use that for. Really, really cool. So right now I have this on the master bus of this song and it's bypass right now. We're gonna listen to this on a couple of different sound sources. As you can see on this mix, there are no plugins on this mix at all, except on the drums I'm using auto align to do some phase correction. But other than that, nothing else is going on. And I have a couple of instances of EQYs here on a couple of different drums so we can see what it does. So let's first start off with just, um, let's just listen to something like, uh, oh, I don't know. Let's take a listen to say our kick drum here. We have a kick in track here. So we're gonna mute the rest of our drums, gonna mute our bass and our keyboards. That's what we're gonna to listen to it on. And it is bypassed on the master bus. So all we're listening to here is the kick in mic and I'll turn it up a little so you can hear it. Okay, this is just a raw kick mic. You see this world? Oh, let me turn off my vocals. Okay. Okay. So I picked acoustic bass drum as my chart here in the preset. Okay, acoustic bass drum and there's snare, toms, everything. Okay, and this kind of gives me again a guide. And what I love about it is you get the graphic display in the background, much like you do with say the uh, Pro EQ, the Studio One Pro EQ or the Fab Filter EQ, you get this visual display so you can kind of see what's going on with your audio. But again, by using this chart, you can you can target in. So let's 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 make this all nice and flat the way it comes stock. I already tweaked this prior to hitting to record button here. So so let's look at this. So we have our it's a seven band EQ here. Okay. So we talked about the chart here. Now if we come down here to the bottom, you could turn on and off. Like if you wanted to turn on your low cut, you just click it here, and you could turn your low cut on and off. You have a shelf you could turn on and off. Okay. And then you have all your your normal peak EQs, right? You can turn them on and off here. You have a high shelf here and a high cut here, okay? You can also come in with your scroll, your mouse over here, and you can just say like on the, the adjustable cue, you can take this and you can just move your mouse up and down and you can adjust the cue, okay? So if I were to bring this up here, just so you can see this, the orange band, I can adjust the cue by doing this, okay? I can just take this and I can grab it and I can swing it around like any old EQ. There's nothing special about that, right? But that's how you use that. Okay, so you can turn off the different bands here on the bottom. We have an output slider if we wanted to turn the, uh, the, uh, the volume up or down, okay? And that's really it. Okay, so let's, uh, let's, so let's say on this kick drum, if we started everything else flat, Okay, now you can see what's kind of going on. You can see there's real no high-end information here because they might have gone ahead and uh, they may have um, you know, EQ'd before they recorded. We don't know. Turn this up a little. But we want a little bit of thump, right? So where do we want to go? Here's our low-end rumble. Here's the body and the weight of that kick drum. So we could just take our point. We want some real low end. And there it is, right around 50 hertz. Okay, we could bring that down a little, might be a little much. Now if we wanted to find some of that muddiness, you can see as soon as I bring my cursor over this point, you can see it highlights this shaded area. This is where the muddiness or the boxiness is gonna be. It's gonna be between that 300 and 500 hertz range. And you can see it down here on the bottom, okay, the frequencies. So if I just crank this up, there's that kind of hollowness sound, right? We could just take this and cut it out a little. Now, if we want to widen the cue, we come down to the cue. We can just use our mouse here. Oh, that's real, real narrow. Let's, let's uh, bring that back down. Maybe a little more gentle curve. Now, let's say I want a little bit of attack on that kick. It's an inside, so I want to click. Well, here's the air and the click up around this 5K mark. Now, there's not a lot of information here, but let's see if we can dial some up here. Get a little bit of the snare in there. There's the attack of that kick right around there. Now, if we want to get rid of, uh, say, uh, the fifth and the seventh here, we could just come down here and turn off those, those points so we're only looking at what we're dealing with. Okay, 
So now if I were to bypass it, it's before, after. Really cool. So by using the charts here, it kind of helps us uh, hone in on what frequencies should we be targeting. Again, awesome for beginners because beginners have a real difficult time um, in the beginning, not knowing, well, if I want real low end thump of the kick drum, where do I go? Where the, where, what frequencies do I need to kind of target? This is a great aid for you. And it sounds really good too. It's pretty transparent. It doesn't have any color. This is great for surgical. This is like kind of a surgical EQ, I would say. Unlike a vintage style plugin where you're gonna get some harmonic distortion and all that kind of stuff. This is just really good for just cleaning up and shaping your sound. Awesome. Okay, so here is the kick drum. So now um, let's go ahead and uh, Let's uh, let's let's turn it off on the kick drum itself. Let's just get rid of it for a second, and let's put it on. Let's say the drum bus, and let's just see what we do with. Oh, I don't want to do that. Let's do this. We'll solo up all of our drums, okay? Unprocessed, just with auto align. Okay, now let's go ahead and let's just bring a stereo uh, or a version of this over here, and let's uh, let's fully reset it here. Full reset, okay? So here it is on the drum bus. And let's just see if we can shape the entire bus with this. How does it sound? Now for our chart, we don't have anything called the drum bus per se. This is uh, individual um, drums, if you will. But we can just keep it on the general. We have general one, which has um, rumble, synth bass, bottom. You can see the chart here. We could go to general number two. Sub bass, bass, low mid range. Okay, this might be more appropriate to kind of, again, uh, hone us in on the on where we want to be. So again, this is the whole drum kit now. So if we want to get a little more of that low end, like we were saying a few seconds ago, let's just uh, kind of bring this over here. We know it's right around that 50 hertz range, right? Okay, and then we can uh, gentle the curve a little if we want. Okay, now let's get rid of some of that mid-range and that boxiness, right? We said it's going to be right around that three to 500 range. If we change the chart, okay, here it is. It's going to give us more body warmth in the mud. So let's get rid of some of that mud. Let's see if there is any mud. So let's first narrow the cue here. Let's kind of scroll up this. Let's get a little bit wider cue. You're gonna get that boom. About 350 hertz, right? So that we can just take this and crank it down. Now, if we want a little bit of crack, a little bit of presence, we come over here. Here's our presence range. There we go. Now, if we want to get rid of this one, we'll turn off that and turn off uh, the shelf. Now we, before. Think that's too much we can bring that down a little wonderful okay so that's on a drum bus so you can see how quickly you can get in there use use the guide use the chart watch the graphic display and dial in and in really really click really really quickly and shape the sound it's really really cool Okay, so that's on the drum bus. Now, if we were to shut that off on the drum bus, and let's just do this. Um, uh, we could do this on guitar. Let's do, let's take a listen, look, listen to this guitar here for a second. I'll keep the drums going ahead. Let's fully reset this. Okay, now if we want to do like a low a low cut filter, we could just turn on our low cut right down here. And there it is in purple, and we can kind of come up here. We could shut off our low shelf here, and we can kind of bring this. Now 
Now in the recording process, you can see there's no information down here. They already did probably a low cut filter, but for good measure, we can do that. That's how you use it. Now again, here's some muddiness right in this area here. And we're doing this in solo. So you'd want to do this in the context of a mix to see where you want to cut out some frequencies. You want all the instruments to play nicely together, but I want to do this in solo so you can hear what the EQ is doing. So we got a little bit of mud here. Let's try to get rid of that mud. So let's narrow this a little bit, bring it up. Now I may want to bring in some air, but you can see there's no information up here really. But we could bring up some presence. Okay, so obviously it's going to be dependent on your source material, but you can see again how I can use the chart and I can get myself where I need to be very quickly. Okay, that's on guitars. So now we'll listen to it on a couple of different things. Now, what if we were to just listen to it on the whole mix? Again, this is an unmixed track, completely unmixed. But if I were to just, let's say, solo everything up here, and let's just put this on the master bus, okay? Let me turn down this kick drum a little. Again, we haven't even really done a static mix, so it's going to be a little, little wacky, but you guys will get the idea. I'm going to take it off the drum bus altogether. I'm going to take it off the, uh, the guitar, the bass, and the keyboards, and the lead vocals. Okay, we're just going to put it on the master bus now, just so we can keep this video relatively short. Okay, so here is the entire mix here. Set it. I see our other life just giving in to the You're so hot that you could turn some blind. Okay, so now for our general chart, general chart will give us kind of this overall rumble, sub bass, bottom, but you know, so on and so forth. Our general two chart is just going to change things a little bit, a little bit more generic, sub bass, bass, mid range, mid range, high mid range, high frequencies. Okay, I kind of like the first, the first chart. Um, when we talk about, you know, the honkiness, the tinniness, the, the crunch, the presence of the mix. And let's just see if we could dial this in a little bit and just see what it does for the entire mix, completely just static raw mix. So we want some bottom ends, right? Okay, so there it is. There it is on a master bus with no other processing at all. So hopefully you can see that if you were to use this on every one of your tracks individually and shape the sounds, you can really get the mix dialed in really, really quickly. Now, again, EQ is probably, you know, I get asked a lot, you know, what's one of the more important things you need to really learn as a mixing engineer? EQ is probably the most important, followed by compression. But EQ is really where you get your clarity, your balance, 
on how you really shape the overall tone. So EQ is super important. A lot of people kind of overlook it a little bit and because it, it confuses a lot of beginners because again, they don't understand the frequencies. They don't understand the different instrumentation and where the more fundamental and important frequencies are for those particular sound sources. And the Ableton, Ableton's EQ Wise Plus really gives you that aid of using these charts to really help you. It's like having a, a cheat sheet, you know, a frequency guide cheat sheet, which I've given out in a lot of my Made Easy courses. They built it right into the EQ, which is great. And again, it's a, what's a three, four, five, six, seven, two, four, six, eight, eight band EQ here that you can just turn on and off with the click of a button. Um, it's graphical, it's colorful, it's easy to use. Um, it sounds good as far as it doesn't add any tone or any color or any, or any weirdness to the sound. It just cleans things up and it works really, really well. And I think this is a great, great product, a great plugin. And for 50 bucks, you can't go wrong. And again, we got a handful of these licenses we're gonna be giving away in the mixing contest at learningtomix.com. So again, go check that out. But again, this is one of the first times I've taken a plugin from a manufacturer and demoed it, uh, you know, not for them per se, but um, you know, again, they gave me the plugin and I wanna thank them for that and let me try it out. It's really, really cool of them. And I don't normally do that as a lot of my followers know. Um, I'm, I'm completely independent from, from all these other plug-in companies but this one really struck uh really piqued my interest because of the training aid with the chart that's what i really liked and i really wanted to bring it to you so go demo it you love it spend 50 bucks on it i would use this before i would use the stock eq of any daw hands down um, because of the, the the extra aid of the chart so i hope you found this video helpful again please like please subscribe, give me the old thumbs up, share this video with others. And once again, go to homerecordingmadeeasy.com for all your training needs around mixing, mastering, recording, and also learningtomix.com. Don't forget to be a VIP member, get the five free courses. And until the next video, this has been Dave with homerecordingmadeeasy.com and I will see you guys all soon. Take care.